find Harry. Where is Harry in this picture? Today's video is sponsored by Rem. Hey, so welcome back. We are on our way to pick up some more trees. Okay, so here's the order for this year. This is basically what you get. A bunch of nice, nice well-rooted trees, bare root. Okay, so we've got 50 service berry, we've got 25 cherry, 25 high bush cranberry, and 25 elderberry. Okay, so now around the pond, I wanted to really have a lot of trees and bushes that come out and push out into the pond and kind of hide that rock edge. So we actually planted service berries all around the wetland filter and then all around this edge here. And that'll just add some shoreline interest to the pond. I'm really excited for those to grow. I think it might take a while. And then I also added some high bush cranberries here to the south of the service berry. Now that the service berry is up, I can start adding things to the south of it that will grow as the service berry grows and won't shade it out. So that's another thing you can think of in terms of planting with timing is, you know, when are you adding things to the south of other things? You can add them as the things to the north are getting bigger. And then all along the waterfalls coming down here, we added more service berries with the idea, again, that they'll creep out and over. So when I plant them, I kind of tried to start angling them out towards creeping out and over the shoreline, although, you know, the plants will kind of adjust themselves and match themselves to the sun. And then we can kind of train them if we, if we are able to with, um, you know, sticks and that kind of thing, sticks and ropes and stones to kind of get them growing the way that we want them to. So Keith went and got a whole bunch of trees, whole bunch of new trees. I'm not sure where he thinks he's fitting them all in, but we got a lot of new trees. <laughs> and we have uh, Keith's mom here today helping us plant. <laughs> So yeah, the planting part of it is fun, but I'm still not sure where he thinks he's fitting everything. Give me the nicest one for this one. I keep trying to give the trees away. So we'll see how many we end up planting. So these are cherries we're planting right now. Like full cherry trees, so not cherry bushes. So these will, these can get 100 feet tall. Are, be... are they sweet or sour? Uh, they're black cherries. Which is what, like? Sour. Why would you want sour cherries? Well, these are mostly for the birds and stuff. And they look nice. Have you ever seen cherries in bloom? Like yeah. big forests of cherries in bloom? Like the Japanese forests and stuff? Just having the ones that are supposed to be coming in bloom. In Toronto. Any day now. The Hyde Park, you know how they have it? Doesn't look like much now. It's pretty tiny. So the other thing we did was we uh, soaked these in the pond. So they're kind of, the roots have been soaked and that should kind of help them survive a little bit. Um, normally with trees, you'd want to really water them a lot for the first at least month or so. Uh, give them nice deep soaks. Um, however, 
we don't really have the time to do that on such a large scale so all this leaf mulch and everything like you know when I pull it back there's a lot of moisture in here still and it hasn't rained you know too often um, this raspberry here we transplanted um, what maybe two weeks ago one week ago one week. so it is starting to bud and come that doesn't necessarily mean that the plants gonna be okay um, a lot of times you'll get kind of bud growth just based off of the moisture that's residual in the wood so the real the real trick is do you still have a plant kind of three months down the road <laughs> so yeah it'll be more do we have is this thing still alive in in june july that'll be that'll be the the answer and then for raspberries and other root spreading plants especially you know all of this can actually die as long as the roots survive you might come by and see that this is completely dead don't pull it out instead just you know break it off at the end of the season if you want but next spring you might actually get growth coming out the only thing that matters is that the root survives you know especially on stuff like a raspberry so don't give up too much on it too early you might do all right you're a little in the way <laughs> Now anyone who watches this channel knows that I love planting trees. I plant them on my own land, I plant them in my community, I plant them anywhere that I can. And I really want to support planting trees as the number one thing we can do, not only for our natural world, but also to help fight and combat climate change. Now there's more impactful things you can do from a pure carbon perspective, but there's nothing more that we can do that addresses carbon and also restores the natural world and it's that intersection it's that permaculturists call it stacking efficiencies this is where we should really focus as much of our energy and effort as possible and what i want to do today is walk you through some of the membership screens because you know it's one thing for me to say support ren because they're sponsoring the channel but i don't want you to support ren just because they're sponsoring the channel. I want you to support Ren because I believe in Ren and I myself am a member of Ren. I'm not gonna ask you to ever join something that I'm not already supporting. So I'll walk you through some of these screens. And the first thing that you'll notice on the landing screen is that it gives you your total impact. Now this is from a little while ago, so it was kind of, I just had started. And on the right, you see all these project updates. So you can scroll through this and see how your money is actually being used to impact the planet. Now it also shows you your carbon footprint and I'm gonna be fully transparent and show you what mine is. This is important because we need to know the impact that we're having on the planet before we can fix it. Now for me, living up in Canada where cities are kind of really far apart, transportation is probably the most unavoidable carbon impact that we can have and it is for me and you can see even by switching one of my vehicles to electric still having the other vehicle being a gas vehicle we still have a tremendous carbon footprint just from transportation now if you live in a bigger city and you can cut transportation completely this is actually one of the biggest carbon impacts that you can possibly make in your life you can see that we're doing really well on other things, conserving energy, minimizing spending. Now the next tab over is something called actions. And these are different things that you can actually take on and do. I really like this aspect of the membership program with Ren because not only are you supporting them doing other things, you have this giant fantastic tool and resource to help you make better choices in your own life. So check the link in the description below and the first 100 people to sign up will get a free 10 trees planted in their name. Let's get back to planting trees and I'll show you where all these awesome trees went. Okay, so it's tomorrow morning because my camera died and I just had to get that stuff planted before it dried out. And I just like to say how much I love the mornings here. The nature sounds all the birds fantastic okay so i'll just show you my idea for where i planted all of the different trees why i think you know it makes sense to continue to plant trees every year even though your system is done just filling in some spaces with 
service berries and then we've got service berries added kind of all in and around the edge here so that we'll have a nice wall of like white flowering tall green leafy bushes all around that outside and then we've got raspberries which i prioritize a little less but they're to the north of the service berries and then lucy when she comes out of the house she comes bolting right down this pathway here and she goes right through there to her favorite tree and she sits there so we might remove this which is a service berry i planted last year and what i wanted to do is plant a couple on either side of her so that she'd have like a little tunnel of trees to bolt through so i'm kind of trying to think of where all the beings on my planet are using my land and then you know kind of planting in and around that and the second thing i'm trying to figure out what i'm planting is sure maybe i don't need anything now in some of these areas but these areas aren't always going to be like this and i want to start planning for the future so this beautiful dogwood here my wife absolutely loves it's about to flower actually and it's absolutely majestic for the day or two that it's actually flowering and it is only about a day or two and probably my wife's favorite tree slash bush on the whole property and I don't know how old it is it was here when we got here and it's here in some pictures from about 12 years ago so at some point this is going to go and I want to kind of bring in the next succession of plants so we planted service berries kind of all in front of it we've got a heart nut here in front of it and two persimmons one there and one over here that i don't think actually survived the winter but we'll see so we're kind of planting things in and around it to become the next key player in that little area and then lucy's kind of walking right through the gardens and uh, we're kind of just adding, you know, a service berry here, just filling in some gaps and giving us some backups to if some of these has cap cuttings that I planted last year for some reason don't, um, you know, play out. If this pawpaw here, for example, doesn't really do well, that pawpaw there, if that doesn't do well, just kind of adding some service berries or this here is a high bush cranberry planted here because they can kind of tolerate a little bit of shade from these two maples one there and one over here but look at these uh has caps they're already flowering there's lucy sitting under her favorite tree and she's got a friend coming walking down the road so look at these has caps here they're actually already starting to flower these are dig outs um cuttings of ones from last year and this one here too and we'll go to the next spot while Lucy barks at the people who walk by. Okay, on a similar vein to that dogwood, this apple here was on the property when we bought it. And I kind of brought the height down a little bit. But we really like this tree in this area. Especially because from when you're out on the grass lot and you're looking back this way, it looks like it stands over this cliff that's kind of behind me. But we have been putting this bench here and we'll sit on this once in a while kind of looking across the pond and we thought you know I don't well I was thinking I don't know how long this apple tree is going to be here so I wanted to plant some roses behind it we've got a peach sapling there we've got pawpaws here um, this is a blueberry I believe and then we've got uh, service berries now on either side of the bench including up here you know three kind of planted in a cluster and you guys know my mom was out there helping us plant. And I thought, I want three service berries in a real close area that will kind of remind me of the day that she came over and planted all those plants with me. So that, you know, maybe 20 years in the future, this little bench seating area, I'll remember that I made that with my mother. So this is that nice view kind of over the hill and when the apple is in bloom especially it just looks fantastic over that hill and then this is where sometimes my wife and I'll come and sit just right at the top of this waterfall here 
Ignore that gazebo. I still got to fix it. I got lots to do, I know. But imagine in 20 years when all these service barriers are coming out over the pond edge. It'll really make it feel like a lost in paradise type pond. Harry! Harry! Come on down, Harry! Oh! Hi, Harry. Trying to find his way down. Oh, take a little peepees. We're here now in the old man walking trail and you can see this is where I stack all my prunings uh, so that I can make bio, mo more biochar. It's drying out but it's doubling as habitat for wildlife and this whole entire area this year has been completely planted out um, at least with the tree and bush species. There's the odd um, there's the odd you know herbaceous layer plant that I've put in but we've got cherries so these are black cherries and these are spread roughly 20 feet apart these will become absolute monsters in the long term future and i'll probably even have to thin some of them but for now we've got them you know every 10 feet apart we've got um, high bush cranberry and elderberry and raspberry planted all in here as well and the idea oh and look we've got <laughs> So you guys do the same thing. You always find your tools hidden in the in the mulch. So we're just kind of trying to fill this in. Um, this little log is so I can cross the bed without stepping on anything. And I'm going to try to add more of that kind of stuff in here. Just so I know I'm putting the pressure, my foot pressure on the same spot every single time. Um, this area is a little wetter, so I prioritize the high bush cranberry and the elderberry down in here because those are great options if you have, you know, lands that kind of flood once in a while. And then we've got the pawpaws. So someone had a comment the other day about you're in Canada. How are you growing pawpaws? Well, there are pawpaws that will survive zone four. So there are cold hardy varieties of pawpaw. So make sure you keep your eyes out for them. I'll do a, probably I do a, a pawpaw video later this year. And I don't know if we showed it or it'll make it in, but we've got tons of garbage in here. It's kind of really unfortunate. We, uh, when I did this video on 1500 leaf bags, or I think this was 900 or something like that down here, I was talking about how people just throw their garbage in the leaf bags. And it's kind of unfortunate because then as the leaf bags decompose, you start to see all the garbage show up. So, you know, if this is you and you throw your garbage in leaf bags, you know, please stop. It's just ridiculous. There's no need for that. You're putting leaves in bags for the sole purpose of them being biodegradable and you're throwing plastic into, into those things. So I actually look for that when I pick up my leaf bags I try to look for bags that are just leaves and you know even through trying to selectively remove that uh, we still get tons of it it's just crazy so this area tons and tons of you know cherry 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 every 10 feet or so 10 12 feet and then filled in with raspberries and service berries and elderberries this area here's a little drier it's a little south of this big cedar that I'm standing under. So it'll get a little more sun. So we prioritize the service berries here because, you know, they'll really take off in the sun and the slightly drier climate compared to the um, elderberries and 
high bush cranberries that really do like a little bit of shade and really really wetness they'll do good in the sun as well and they'll probably crop higher in the sun but as far as prioritizing what will do good in the shade they're great options this last bed we actually filled these here with the same idea but this last bed here is south of the sumac patch south of the giant cedar and this is the lowest spot of my property before the water uh, trickles kind of it's this way slowly trickles into the river down there and this area here was kind of planted a long contour to try to intercept that flow from above the land stop it into a bed now we're going to grow it into vegetation so because this is really wet area during a really heavy rain we really went heavy on the elderberry down here because they really really like the wetness so you don't need any more trees and it's technically true but it's just so fun to plant them and it's so fun to create a new forest where there wasn't one before that I'll, I'm going to do this for the rest of my life and I just I love trees and I like getting good deals on trees I like buying trees for three dollars each two dollars each even and um, I don't know I just I find it really fun to plant something out and then watch it evolve over time this area down here it's such an easy low maintenance area because of all the shade and all the water that naturally accumulates down here that I'm planting plants that I'm not going to really have to take care of I'm not going to have to baby these and if some die they were only two bucks and if some live they were only two bucks and I'll create a little walking forest legacy down here for you know a couple hundred dollars um, that's largely sponsored actually entirely sponsored by you fine folks in the membership program so thank you very much for supporting the channel you guys are making stuff like this possible because it would be impossible to convince my wife that we need more plants where is that can we see that but when it's coming from you find folks donating it then it makes it a lot easier for me to to do so thanks for watching everyone i'll see you on the next one